learning to do things the SQL way can be challenging at first, in particular dates. Date conversion can be awkward. And in this case, if we take a look at this date field, the data type is actually a number. What we'd like to do is convert this to become a date. To do that, what we're going to do is use a couple of different commands. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is let's create a new query and we'll add that table and let's go to SQL view. And what we're going to do is just select that field, run that query, and there's the field there. Now there is a couple of different commands to be able to convert this and we could try it directly. It's called cdate, but that's not going to work because this isn't a known format. That isn't a known format. It's not able to figure that out. So instead what we're going to do is make it a known format and basically the query needs to add a slash here and a slash here. So that's what we're going to have to do for each one of these. So after four characters, we need a slash. And then after two more, we need to put a slash. So let's go ahead and do that in this first. So the way to do that is we're going to actually use a command called left. And we can grab the left number of characters for this. And we can just enter a number in here. And we'll just name this as new date just so we have a name. And you can see that grabs the leftmost two characters. And if you remember, the date is year, month, day. So we want the first four characters, and now we have the date. Perfect. So then what we can do is add in a slash, and you can concatenate strings together by putting uh, pluses. And then we can add date of infraction and of course oops that's plus oh we need to have a qu uh, quote around that either side you can see that that's not really working yet so I've I haven't done it completely so this plus that plus date of infraction so this is a number so it thinks I'm trying to add the number so it's a little bit confused but nonetheless if we just do that you can see we get a slash. Okay, so we've got a slash there. So what we want to do now is do the opposite and we can get the left, or sorry, the right side of date of infraction. And that can be two characters because the two left-hand side is the day. Now, technically this isn't totally right. This is year and day. So we need to get the month in there. So we know the left command allows you to grab the left, in this case, four. The right command gets the right two. We need to kind of figure out a way to get the middle stuff. And there is actually a command to start at a particular point. Instead of start at the left or start from the right, we can actually start at the mid. And that's literally called mid as the command. And that mid command has the same idea. So we can actually just say, mid again what field date of infraction and then we'll put uh, put the number of characters so there's going to be two or sorry the starting point so we want it after the fourth character so we want the fifth character see one character two three four that's the year so the fifth character and the sixth character now the mid command doesn't have the ability to stop getting the number, but uh, we will do this. Add in our slash, and let's just see what that returns. So you can see we're getting everything in there, so we just need to insert that item. And we can actually use the left and the right option to grab the items uh, associated with this. So we can actually just say we need, in this case, the left two from that, and there you go. Now we have all of the items there. So that is now our date. 
in a proper format, but it's still not a date. This is still a string uh, in this case. So what we need to do is convert that to a date. And if you remember that original I uh, command I started with was cdate. If we put the cdate around the entire thing, now it's actually being interpreted as a date. And there you go. So now we have our date in there, but what we'd like to do is fix the column that is inside of our data. We don't want this to be this way, and we don't have to run this very complex SQL every single time. So what we're going to do is edit our main table. And if we go into design view on this table, we can actually insert a new row in here. And we'll just call this one infraction date. And we're going to make it of date time. Now, we're only putting the date in here, not the time. But now at least we'll have the proper format to be able to save the data as a date column. Close this to commit that change. And then we just need to convert this select into an update. So to do that, I'm going to preserve this select. We'll go to create a new query switch it to SQL view, and we're going to be using an update type query. So let's go back to SQL view. So update, which table are we going to update? We're going to be updating uh, parking tickets main. So we're updating that uh, table, and we're going to be setting the column. Let's just open this up. We're going to be setting this infraction date column infraction date is equal to, and then we can grab our logic of how we converted the data here. And basically it's all of how we're displaying the data is what we want this to do. And there you go. Now I have an update using the logic we pre-tested in the select and we can test this out. If you don't have the little exclamation mark, you have to go back to query design. You can hit run, and that will go ahead and run it. And if it's gonna do a large update, sometimes it gives you a bit of a warning about how it can't undo it, and that's okay. We want to commit this. The advantage here, if we do make a mistake, we still have the original data, because this is not touching data of infraction. So we'll say yes. Let the query finish. It'll take a couple of seconds. Then it immediately prompts that you are about to update all records. You can say yes, and it commits that. Then if we open up this table now, if we take a look at that individual column, you can see it's now a date field with the valid date. And you can see it works throughout the months, and it's converted all the data properly. And there you have it. We've converted the date of infraction, which in this case, it was a number field, into a true date time type, but only storing the date. If you did want to also store the time in there, we could continue that process, adding in the time into the conversion before we update that individual column. Now, once you've done this, of course, the design view, we could remove this date of infraction and just keep the date time if that's what we wanted. Thank you.